Now let us look at satellite as access. We call it regenerative payload. That means the new radio or G node B itself is there on the satellite. So in this case, when satellite is hosting 5G radio access network, that is Z node B. So the gateway, the satellite gateway uh, gets connected to 5G core network and it transmits the NGC or NGU interface which is from core network to the RAN. We call it NGC and NGU interface on frequency 2, F2 to the satellite. So satellite acts as a Z node B and all the functions of Z node B is taken care by the satellite. In addition, it also does frequency conversion. So it transmits new radio signal or UU interface to the users on frequency F1. So this is our access or uh, this is our feeder link. The link between satellite and gateway is a feeder link. So, if you see, you have user equipment that can be a mobile or a IoT device or that can be a node or can be a relay UE. It can be any type of UE. And then you have interface, air interface, U interface. And G node B is implemented onto the satellite. So, satellite is having uh, processing or compute. And then it gets connected to NGC, NG core or 5G core on NGC and NGU interface uh, via gateway. It's not shown here. So in between the gateway, satellite gateway will come. And then we have a data network on N6 interface or NG6 interface. So picturally, the NG RAN is uh, this much which contains the gateway, NTN gateway, non-terrestrial network gateway or satellite gateway and you have satellite where G node B is there and then you have an air interface. So all those information from NTN to G node B is on SRI satellite radio interface we call it. So entire NG payload is on SRI. Now there will be multiple satellite having G node B function and there is a possibility that there will be a roaming requirement because one user today or at particular point of time may be, may be served by one satellite. After some time, a satellite may not be in line of sight, so other satellite will serve. So you require a inter-satellite link. So basically inter-satellite link uh, on that XN interface, XN interface for mobility management in 5G. So between two G, G node Bs, you have XN interface. In 4G, it used to be X2. So this is inter-satellite link over which this XN interface will be implemented so that when satellites are moving one after another, so it will also roaming will happen from or mobility will happen or handover will happen from one G node B to other G node B implemented on satellite. That is case one. Now, suppose this particular G node B is not directly connected to a 5G core network, although here it is shown. Let us assume that this G node B is have to be connected to the same 5G core which this G node B is connected. So, there is a possibility that this uh, G node B connects to 
the intersatellite link and then traffic is transparently carried by this satellite to NTN gateway and to the core. So you may have a single core uh, being served by multiple G node Bs at different satellites using the intersatellite links ISL. So this is the point which I discussed. Now one satellite may host more than one Z node B. The same satellite may have more than one G node B. But the same SRI will carry both the NG payload to the respective core. So these are the possibilities three possibilities which we have. Again in this case if you draw the PDU session, so PDU session the radio bearer is between user equipment and the satellite where G node B is implemented and from this satellite to NTN gateway and two 5G core, UPF part of 5G core, user print function of 5G code, you have NGU tunnel. So you have radio bearer here, resource, and here NGU tunnel. And on to this PDO session, you will have quality of service flows. So in fact, actual traffic will flow, actual uh, user data, user traffic will flow onto different QS flows required for different quality of service. So if you see the architecture of PDU session, it is remaining same as it was there in a normal or new radio scenario. So as such there is no change. If you look at protocol stacks of user plane and also control plane, so as such nothing is changing. The only thing which you which is changing is that from satellite to NTN gateway, this payload is being transferred on SRI, satellite radio interface on that. So that's the only change. So the complete payload of this layer is uh, transported on SRI. Similar is the case for control plane protocol stacks. So as such, we don't see any change the only requirement will be the timer because because of the satellite there will be more delay depending upon which satellite we are using whether we are using low orbit satellite leo or mio or geo so there will be a considerable latency or delay so we need to extend the timers because the protocol exchange you know you also set or configure certain timers so those timers are to be extended to cope with the long delay of the feeder link okay so satellite as bent pipe we have already discussed uh, so we'll now discuss satellite as du of split g node b so let us first understand the g node b split architecture as per 3gpp if you read the 3gpp architecture of new radio or g node b so the g node b can be implemented as a single box as it was being done in 4g 3g which gets connected to 5g core on ng interface or we have an option to split G node B into two parts, the central unit part Z node B CU and the DU part G node B DU. And in this picture you can see that multiple DU can be connected on one CU on standard open F1 interface. And as we had been discussing that there will be XN interface between the two Z node Bs. So in satellite architecture, we would now look at split architecture, how CU and DU 
split architecture can be implemented on satellite. So if you look at uh, this picture, so what it shows that on the ground we have implemented G node B C U and on the satellite we have implemented G node B D U. So D U is distributed unit, C U is central unit. So that means the baseband unit is divided into two parts du and cu some part is being handled at du and some part is being handled at cu so this split architecture is also possible using the satellite so g node b du is implemented on satellite and f1 open interface is on sri satellite radio interface we have ntn gateway so this G node B C U can actually be implemented as part of gateway itself or outside gateway that same implementation and then of course uh, you have a terrestrial backhaul to core network and then to the data network. And as we were seeing in the actual architecture of split architecture so multiple du can be connected to one cu so that is also possible du on board different satellites may be connected to same cu on ground so suppose you have second satellite third, third satellites having du all those can be connected to the single cu as per the standard architecture of g node b and then the same satellite same satellite can actually host multiple du's there can be more than one DU on one satellite and onto the same SRI interface all those F1 different F1 payloads interfaces will be implemented. So in this case if you look at the PDU session so the green one is the PDU session so from UV to satellite which is du ntn gateway and then g node b control part so from here to here you have radio bearers and from g node b cu to upf of 5g core you have ngu tunnel and on this pdu session different quality of service flow will be there so as such uh, there is no change in the concept of pdu session in this architecture also So here also uh, the protocol layers for user plane part and also to the control plane part on right side are same except as we saw that interface F1 interface is being carried on SRI here the user plane part and control plane part and NTN gateway is just transferring IP to IP kind of connectivity you can just see so as such there is no change except again the delay part has to be taken care by adjusting the timings in different protocols satellite can also be used in a multi connectivity architecture that means one UE may connect to different access either a set different satellite or terrestrial and satellite combination of terrestrial and satellite so let us have a look at this architecture in this architecture just see that z node b is here on the ground but satellite is working as a transparent payload that means working some kind of repeater through ntn gateway the user interface goes to this and then to the u bend pipe kind of architecture the other g node b is also on ground but being transmitted on a terrestrial network tower so this ue can actually connect to satellite connect via satellite or connect via the terrestrial network so it has a multi connectivity either it can use simultaneously or it can use either this or this 
depending upon the requirement and yes between the g node bin you have roaming xn interface so mobility will be taken care and both are getting connected to say same 5g core and then to the data network so this is the multi connectivity architecture the next example of multi connectivity architecture given here is that here also i have a bent pipe type of implementation two satellites and there are two z node b which are using different satellites and uv is uh, having signal or connectivity from both the path so uh, these are the architecture here also it is same split architecture uh, in a multi connectivity environment let us see so this we have explained the split architecture now let us see this in this implementation the ntn gateway is working as central unit of g node b or ran or ng ran or new radio the satellite is working as distributed unit split architecture and you have f1 interface over sri on other side we have a terrestrial uh, g node b so this uv gets connected to satellite having split architecture and this u can also get connected to a terrestrial g node b and then of course 5g core network and data network so this is also a feasibility or solution for multi connectivity architecture now here in in this example complete g node b is implemented onto the satellite both satellite and we have ntn gateway which is connecting to core network 5g core network so you will can connect to both the satellite where g node b is implemented so this is another solution for multi connectivity architecture so all permutation combination of terrestrial satellite network can be used for multi connectivity architecture now the last topic of the session is about relay node so what are relay nodes so basically relay node are receiving the user interface uu interface and then relaying the same signal for other other uh, uus so basically not all uvs will be able to receive signal directly from the satellite or from a terrestrial network uh, they may be inside a container or may not be having line of sight etc in in such case there is a concept of relay node so relay node can receive the signal and then relay it to the other users so that is also one of the specification which 5g uh, has come out with so relay node can work in both the scenario in case satellite is working as a bent pipe or transparent payload or in case satellite is working as z node b either in a uh, complete g node b implementation or split architecture both so in both cases our relay node can work so relay node work just like an uv but it relays the signal to the ultimate or target uvs so just see the relay uv use cases so the signal from satellite is being received by the relay uv so this relay uv can be installed suppose there is a moving platform there is a truck having containers and inside the containers you have so many iot sensors uh, need to be connected to 5g network so you have a relay uv on top of your truck which is accessing the satellite and then it is relaying the signal so that other uvs are able to access the 5g network so basically remote uva with no satellite access and b is also having may not be having satellite access right but the relay uva is having satellite access and it is transmitting a normal uh, nr user interface so other uvs are able to connect so that means the iot devices can be made a very very simple device 
low complexity device but it will be served by a relay UV which will be having the full kind of circuitry. In this case uh, the 5G RAN is completely implemented here. So same example where remote UV may not have satellite access but the relay UV will have. So with relay UV transmitting user interface to these devices it can connect to the satellite. So this is all I had. Thank you.